when you look at the the you know talks surrounding the school openings what exactly is the guidance it seems that it's up to every parent in the US and across the world to make that decision without knowing exactly what they're you know sending their kids into yeah it, it's a very difficult time right now because um, the true risk of uh, going back to schools for uh, for kids um, is still a little bit unclear. Um, one thing that's certain, though, is that it'll, it's very difficult to send kids back to school if you've got a high level of transmission of the virus in the community, because essentially a school is exactly the type of environment you want to avoid if there's large amounts of transmission in the community. Now, if, if, if your community has well-controlled infections and you have good testing and contact tracing in place, then there are perhaps opportunities to open up more aspects of in-person learning. So I think one of the confusing things becomes the fact that it really is dictated by local conditions. And so there will be some differences across the state, across the country, in terms of how schools are being reopened. Um, as, but everybody has to maintain these basic principles of understanding that they have to minimize the risk of transmission in this population. But, uh, Andrew, from what you're hearing, are the schools that have decided to reopen in taking, uh, you know, taking appropriate social distancing measures? Uh, that is the most difficult thing um, uh, to really put into place. Um, and again, there's a spectrum of responses or the plans that are being put in place with different schools. Certainly some schools are trying to mix online with in-person learning by limiting the number of students that are coming in, limiting the number of days students are coming in. Those approaches seem to make sense, again, particularly if the virus is uh, present at low levels. Um, I think it's difficult in any situation to justify going back to what we saw last year in terms of schools and going back to full classrooms and everybody showing up at the same time um, and, and um, on every day. Because, again, those are the scenarios that uh, there's really no place in the country that um, is controlling the virus well enough to allow those types of activities to resume. How critical are phase three trials that are starting on, the, on these vaccine candidates? Yeah, a, a, a incredibly important point. So um, there are a number of phase three trials that are starting with vaccine candidates. This week there was also a phase three trial that was started with something called monoclonal antibody therapy. Um, that's where you specifically just give people uh, antibodies that neutralize the virus with the hope that they will then improve in terms of their disease progression. Um, these are incredibly important studies because these will not only give us a better idea of any kind of adverse or safety issues um, that, are, that are coming along with the vaccine candidates, but they're also going to look for vaccine efficacy, meaning they're going to keep track of the people that have been vaccinated and see how many of them actually get COVID-19 compared to a control group. And so that's going to be the most critical answer because up until now, We've been showing that these vaccines induce good immune responses. They seem to be lasting for several weeks, but we haven't had that gold standard of does the vaccine protect you from disease? And that's what these phase three trials are going to give us.